Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and this past Monday I was able to attempt a live stream demonstrating the new game Shadow Dark, which is currently on Kickstarter and will be for another six days as of this recording. And while I had a lot of technical difficulties that collapsed our stream early, I do have enough that I want to show some highlights and reflect a little bit on how this game plays. So let's roll it. The way the rules are written makes for some interesting character creation possibilities because you don't have a dump stat. It's all random. And this created a lot of quirky characters that my party of three was able to play. Let's introduce the characters now. The first character we meet is John Anderson, who is a human cleric. He's got a heart of gold, but is rather sickly and not that bright. Then you have Dalil Thalassalis. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's an elf fighter who is quick and strong, but also has a low intelligence and even lower wisdom. And finally, you have Honest John, who was a halfling wizard. His random roles showed up with a criminal background. He's wanted. And his attribute scores are great, except for his wisdom. He is really unwise. And this is going to come back to hurt him in a little bit. If these folks managed to live through this session, it was going to be a miracle. One of the things that I really appreciated with Shadow Dark, and the three players who were at the table with me also echoed this, is the Always On initiative. This is really cool. It's not restrictive. You're not always just waiting your turn. Characters are still able to interact even when somebody else has initiative, and NPCs are allowed to respond to player character questions too, but it just helps to pass the spotlight back and forth between the characters so that everyone gets a turn. We've all been at tables where someone just dominates every moment of role play, and especially for newer characters or folks who aren't comfortable jumping into the shoes and acting out scenes, it can be a little daunting. So passing initiative from one character to the next is really helpful in encouraging role play. And what I found, it was really helpful in establishing how a party comes together. Let's take a look at how this actually worked out. Here's the setup. Um, let me get my stuff up. So you uh, are adventurers. I don't know if you're together or not. Uh, that's something that, that you hadn't really settled on. Honest John's background is kind of interesting. Maybe he's not with the party at the start or not. We don't know. Uh, but you have been summoned or responded to a call for aid from a town called Marisford, uh, which is a, a logging village in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it is, it's barely on a map. It's essentially, there's a trade road that goes through it. It's not at a particularly advantageous spot to stop uh, and rest, but it does have some logging, so there's some trade going through. It's essentially a tavern and some and a couple of businesses and some some houses, right? Well, uh, about a week ago, uh, the mayor of Marisford and his wife uh, were kidnapped, and there has been put out a ransom note to the town that would essentially bankrupt everyone in it, or essentially put the town under the kidnapper's thumb for a very long time in order to get their mayor back, who is rather popular. Uh, his wife is also rather popular, and it's a close-knit community. They need some help. And so they have put out a call for adventurers to come and, and maybe help uh, expedite a, a resolution to, to this problem. And uh, that is where you are coming. So I'm going to ask you right now, uh, Jameson, who are you with and what are you doing? Well, you know, I feel as this young, idealistic uh, young man, fresh out of uh, whatever seminary he's, uh, he's he's pulled himself out of, um, that I would have I would have been seeking adventure, and I would probably be walking in town alone, unless perhaps I maybe met uh, one of these fine fellows along the road, perhaps. But I I have heard the call. I am eager to help. Um, this town sounds a lot like my my 
homeland of Minnesota. And, you know, it, uh, and so I, I just felt at home and just had to come. Are they passive aggressive, nice in Minnesota? Oh, to the max. Okay, great. So I, I hope that comes out at some point during the thing. So you're wandering into Marisford. You do see uh, there is a mill that is going. You actually do see a lumber yard. It would make sense. It's the lumber uh, a lumber town uh, and a tavern. A couple other small shops uh, selling basic gear. Uh, and you're wandering into town. Which let's go to Calvin. Uh, what are you doing as you come into town? And do you see this strange young cleric walking in? Uh, yeah. So as uh, Dally's kind of uh, walking down the road into town, uh, first of all, he he's a little, you know, he's not sure about being here, but he kind of, you know, he's he's looking for adventure. He's looking to maybe make some coin. Okay. Uh, and uh you know but he's he's not sure about this because you know they're chopping down trees that's like what they do here and oh, you know okay. hmm. dally kind of you know he's he's not really in favor of like you know chopping down trees he's he's really more the keeping trees up type that's right yeah dally definitely wants the uh trees to be upright planted roots you know all of that. Okay. Um. So that's uh that's what he wants, but uh, he does see kind of this uh very uh you know kind of kind nice uh looking uh religious figure. Okay. Okay. You see the kind hearted religious looking figure coming into town. What what do you do? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Dally goes right up. And he's like, hey, hey, how are you? I'm Dally. I'm here. Why are you here? Uh, I'm Dally. That, that, that's a nice, nice name. Yes. Um, I, I, I heard the call uh, for help. I, I heard about the, the kidnapped uh, mayor and his, his and his wife. And, and I am a young adventurer, uh, fresh from, from my training, and I am here to help. That's we should be like partners in this, but I'll be honest, I don't know about them cutting down trees. Like I didn't realize that was part of the deal when I headed here. Uh, well, this is a, a lumber town. Um, that's kind of, that's the, the so a lumberjack's job <laughs> is to cut down trees and use them to make other useful things um, that we, we use every day. Well, why not just ask the trees to grow into something useful? Uh, well, um, you know, I am a man of faith. And as a man of faith, I do believe in miracles and that, you know, perhaps uh, amazing things can come from the beautiful land. Uh, uh, but uh, I have to admit, I have never heard of anything quite so amazing uh, as as a tree growing into for example a, a wonderful dining room table you don't that's not that's not normal um not from any of the things i have seen in my limited albeit travels Dally just kind of, kind of like takes a step back. Like he's in a very different world right now. He's not. He's not sure how to process this. He's doing so, some so cross Larry just kind of communication. That's what's going on. Yeah. Larry, Larry just kind of like puts his hand on his shoulder. Says, "You know where I'm from in Minnesota. Uh, you're what we call a a special snowflake. Let's <laughs> let's let's go see. Let's let's go see what the trouble is." All right. As for, sure, I'm, yeah. I'm taking, I'm taking yeah. initiative now. So as you are, are making your way into town, <laughs> special snow. You've been planning that, haven't you, Jameson? So uh, I have I have lived in the upper Midwest for most of my life. Is, so just uh, wait. This is wow. Oh man. Oh gosh. So as you are coming into town. Um, you do, you see up ahead, there is a figure who is mounted on a horse uh, wearing chain mail. Uh, 
hide a little bit of finery not too ostentatious but a little bit um comes kind of strolling up to you slowly if a horse can stroll however a horse strolls right um sits down and looks down at you from the top of his horse ah adventurers well there'll be no need of you now that i'm here did you uh find some coin somewhere else Oh, well, pleasure to meet you, sir. You you, you obviously are, look very brave. Uh, I'm so... Uh, we'll be going now, thank you. Sir Gary Ingot. Remember my name. Ah. I'll be collecting this reward. And he just slowly rides out of town. Gary just, like, turns to, to Larry and he's like, It wasn't nice to meet him. I seem like a jerk. And Larry Why would you think? Of... Larry says nothing and just, All right. just keeps walking. Honest, John, are you watching this happen? What are, what are you doing? I, I'm, I'm not sure. So Honest John, I, 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 I don't know if he can walk into town by himself. I feel like he has managed to stow away on some give me something some wagon of provisions that have been coming to the town absolutely uh, so these two are sitting here they're they're talking to each other gary ingot goes riding off and into town comes uh a, a, a cart that is filled with kegs of something and in the midst of the kegs is a small halfling yeah. with a nice floppy hat and a, and a staff um, in in the back, a knob on the end, and a knob on the end. Of course, there, there has to go. be a knob on the end, right? And uh, when this cart comes to a stop, what do you do? I just uh, I don't even know if it comes to a stop. It might just keep going, and I just kind of roll out. Oh no, it's uh, it it comes to stop. Well, you want it to oh, keep going? Okay, Actually, right. you if you want it to keep going, we can have it keep going. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, it's just kind of like when it, when the town comes by, I'm just gonna like roll. So you're just peeking out the this like a crack in the the side of the cart. So you see what appears to be a town. I mean, I who knows? We're not we're not sure. I, I the, the, as the camera pants, no one knows for sure if he's <laughs> talked to the people on the cart about this. If they even knew he yeah, was of course, there. yes. Who well, no, knows? Don't ask these questions. <laughs> he just kind of rolls out, stands up, picks up his staff, kind of dusts himself off, looks around. You like, uh, you find yourself uh, in front of a tavern. This is this is Marisburg, right? I talk, I say to these two, I'm like it's Marisburg, that's where we're, we're this town. Yeah, a oh. bunch of tree killers. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, little boy, but okay. you, you look a little young to be going into a tavern. <laughs> Dally's just, just like looking at Larry at this point, like, do you know nothing? Like, <laughs> it just... what is, what is, uh, cause, cause where, where is a human? You're, what, what are you? You're, uh, he's an elf. Oh, Dally is an elf. Like... Yeah. Dally's an elf. an elf. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pointy so ears. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I mean, I do. I have the pointy ears too. Not as, it's probably not as pointy, but like, I'm like, I can just look at him. I'm like, Cool. So yeah. So um, there's a there's a reward for for finding someone, right? That's where we're. You guys here for that too? Yeah, it, it, we're we're here to collect the reward. I, uh, apologies, you know. I, I see I see a little figure tumble out of a cart. I assumed that you know it was some child playing around. Uh, apologies for that, good that's, sir. That's, that's fine. And I just kind of look at. I give, I give Dahlia a look that it is not at all fine. I'm not going to say anything. And just be like, sure, not a problem. A highlight of the game is crawling. That's why it's called Shadow Dark. You're constantly going into the darkness, into danger. And none of the characters in Shadow Dark can see in the dark at all. So you need to have torches. 
and the torches burn in real time. I even tried to put up a counter on my stream whenever they lit a torch or another light source, and it was kind of fun. They didn't get to the point before the stream collapsed where it was really a dangerous proposition, but they got really close. You need to make sure you've got light sources or you're in trouble. And even more important than light is just recognizing that crawling through a dungeon, even going into it, is really dangerous. This is something that Honest John found out firsthand. Let's take a look. The torch is on. Keep keep your, your round counter up. Every time you come up, it has to come up. Um, so, yeah, there's the hallway. What you doing? What's the order? Uh, well, I think we decided it was Dolly, me, then you, apparently. <clears throat> yeah. Sure. Okay. So, but I don't know whose turn it is. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it is going to be your turn, Jim. What are you doing? Right. I, I, well, with my liquid courage of a. 14 fake armor class. I guess I'll walk in. All so right. Like, so how are you like, walking in here? Are you just, just like walking into the thing? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. I'll move forward like two spaces and let them shine the light around to what I can see. All right. So as you get to this spot. Sure. Right there. That's about where I was going to be. And I'm... The, the, the uh, floor kind of opens up and goes, boom. So, uh, I need you to uh, roll a 1d6. 1d6? Yeah. yeah. Why not? I, I just need to be clear. Did our wizard <laughs> just walk into a trap? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes it does did. appear so. Uh, four... Your wizard has a five of wisdom. I just want to point that out. <laughs> so, uh, and exactly I, I, the wizard I did indeed roll for this. Um, so the the trap opens up. You find yourself suspended in midair. You're able to turn, um, and I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to make a deck save, and we're going to make it normal. Oh, so it's going to be a twelve or higher to succeed. If you succeed, right. you're going to dive back off onto the ledge. If not, you're going to fall uh, down a ten foot pit and take four points of damage. That'll be great. Uh, I don't think what could go wrong with a minus three modifier. <laughs> oh. oh, oh my God! God. And an, and a, what a natural <laughs> a natural one. And when I roll, so I believe it is. not yeah. only do you yes. fall and take four points of damage, uh, the yeah. the uh, uh, lantern goes the lantern goes out as you are uh, are doing it. Smash on the floor. So the timer is now off. So now you don't have a lantern. The lantern is smashed. How many hit points do you have? Three. So you're dead. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, gosh. Now, if you're familiar with the Shadow Dark rules, have read the Quick Start Guide, or watched any videos explaining how this system works, you recognize in that moment I forgot about death timers. We are all learning this system together, and even though I... Tried to remind myself to not forget it, I did. But here's how it works. When you hit zero hit points, your character is allowed to roll 1d4 plus your constitution modifier, and that's the number of rounds you get before you bleed out and die. You need to stabilize in some way. The player character on their initiative is able to roll a d20. If they hit a 20, they stabilize and they're able to heal and get up again eventually. And if there is a player who wants to help stabilize them, uh, they can roll a d20, and it's a wisdom check. You have to roll with a dc15 in order to stabilize the down character. So I forgot that at the moment, but this allowed us to practice the ancient ritual, which is to introduce a character who just happens to be passing by the area whenever somebody dies. And that was a lot of fun. Out of nowhere, this Interesting looking dwarf comes walking up. <laughs> the path. Um, Calvin, you see the interesting looking dwarf just kind of walk up from behind you, looking in into the into the doorway. What what does uh what does Dally do? Dally looks at this dwarf and he's like, "Oh, are you here to help 
the sick halflings? I turn I turn around, look at the dwarf, and just like just say yes, just say yes. <laughs> One Lars skull splitter. So what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this guy. This guy has. This guy knows country and western. All right. I don't need to do any timers because you're you don't have any timers. So uh, yeah, Jim, it's your initiative. What are you doing? Uh, I I just kind of look him up and down and go. Yes, I am here to help the sick athletes. (laughs) So as I mentioned earlier, one of the cool things about having truly randomized statistics for your characters is that it gives you a lot of quirks or the potential for a lot of quirks. And when you are in the dangerous setting of a dungeon crawl, leaning into those quirks can be a lot of fun. Uh, You've already heard mention Calvin talk about, uh, are you here to save the six goblins? And that's because with his low wisdom, he was just interpreting information wrong. He had heard about some creatures who were not quite as tall as an elf, but a little taller than an average halfling, and they were in this abandoned tower, and uh, he concluded that there were sick halflings there who needed help, and he really leaned into this as he got into the tower. Let's see how that played out. So you don't hear any sound coming from the door as it opens. You do see a hallway going left and right. And you can catch just the glimpse of a hallway going up that way. From here, you can't see anything else. What do you do? It is Calvin's turn. Dolly, what are you doing? Um, so Dolly is going to take like a step in. Okay. Definitely. Uh, um, <clears throat> it is darkness beyond the shine of the light. So what we'll yep, say is yep. that you're and rallying just, and Jim is coming up close. He's he's just like, James hey! Up. Hey, we still, there's still a priest who can heal you. Oh my gosh. This is great. Hold on. Be with me. <laughs> okay, keep going. So, it's, it, like, Dally is concerned that there's no response. He's beginning to worry that all the sick halflings have died. The other cool thing about Shadow Dark is the casting system. It is not Vancian magic. You do not only have a few spells to cast per day, and then it's just hand me the torch time. Uh, You can cast as many spells as you want for all the spells that you know, but you have to roll in order to successfully cast them. And the basic formula is this. It's 10 plus whatever tier number your spell is. So for a tier 1 spell, it's just rolling an 11. If you're an arcane caster, you add your intelligence modifier to the roll. And if you're a divine caster, you add your wisdom modifier to the roll. It's pretty simple. However, there is a danger to it because anytime you fail to cast a spell, well, you don't get to cast it again until the next day. You have to have a rest. And even worse, if you roll a one, you're going to have to roll on the mishap table for a wizard spell, an arcane spell, or you're going to have to do penance for your divine magic until you can get access to that spell again. And so there's some cool features to it, and it does impact how you are going to play the game. As we see when Lars Skullsplitter, that random character who happened by the scene after Honest John fell into the pit, decides he's got to go back and stabilize Honest John. Let's see how that played out. I just want one thing before Lars goes, I just want to point out somebody in the chat was like, wait a minute, there's still time to stabilize the halfling. And we just went right past. <laughs> I, I don't know if, that, I don't that know is... if there is a way... Well, you could have him. The death timer would have been on, but you could have just walked right right by him. Because technically, he's... I mean, I I feel like he would have probably stabilized. If I had known that, I probably, as a priest, would have stabilized him. Oh, you can go back and do it if you want. You're like, oh, wait, sorry. You just retcon that I did that as, as, as we were crossing? Well, let's see. I have to make... It's been one turn, so let's see. It's a 1d4 plus 1 for the the... Or one d four plus constitution modifier. What's what's uh, Honest John's constitution modifier? Uh, it w- it was ten. 
Okay, so it's just one. So yeah, I'll give you, you had one turn to do it. So okay. um, you need to make a, I re it's, I roll it's cure a cure wounds, right? No, well, you can do cure wounds if you want. I guess that would definitely stabilize or, it. Or, or is there a, there's a way to just stabilize without that? There, there, there is a stabilize where um, any intelligent creature C15 in intelligence check. check. Yeah. I, but I if you have do that. but cure wounds would do that fine. So I would just yeah, say but if I, I lose it, I'm losing it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do DC 15 um uh, DC 15 what check? Intelli intelligence intelligence check. check. You can put your modifier on it. Oh, he's not the Lars isn't the smartest guy, but we'll try it. He'll try it. But that's part of why he would do it this way cuz he's not so smart. Okay. All right. There we go. Let's see if Lars Stabilize off John. Oh, oh, my, oh, oh my, god. He does. my god. All right, okay. So he's not a lot. He's just, he's he's sleeping now. All right. Ooh, ooh. There you go. He's not feeling good. He's apparently, well, I didn't know he splatted like that. There you go. <laughs> he's, he's in no condition right. to do anything. He's, yeah. he's, he's in no condition at all. I'm going to pull him off the map. I'll pull him back on. You can leave him there. He is alive. In canon, he's he alive. is alive. You, you can go. bring him back. Um, actually, roll your your. Well, I guess we're going to say that you stabilize him at zero hit points. So, sure. Yeah, he's just he's asleep. Remember, like, we're learning this system, folks. So, so we're uh, definitely going to be playing fast and loose right now. And then when spells are cast, it is amazing because you have that great moment of wow, something cool happened, even when it happens between the players. And this next clip I'm going to show you is when I was really starting to have a lot of glitches in the stream. And so the frame rate dropped to an annoyingly low level. It looks more like a motion comic than anything else. But the encounter of these two characters dealing with the spell casting and the joy of rolling a natural 20, even when casting a spell, that all comes out. Let's take a look at that. As we're traveling, now Larry does have a background as a minstrel. Okay. And so he does pull out a little. He's a youth as... pastor. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The the other the other big secret he is he's fixed too. To be honest, yeah. The, the 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 other big secret too is that you know the flask is empty because he's also not old enough to drink. Um... <laughs> In what world? Oh no. <laughs> so he pulls out a little recorder and he's like. I think, uh, you know, we need, we need some traveling music for the next three miles and just starts a jaunty little tune. Oh, I'm going to grab it gosh. and use burning hand. <laughs> I'm just going to light it on fire. Oh, okay, okay, hand. okay, okay. Burning hands is what, a, a tier one spell? It's a tier one spell. Oh my I gosh. don't care if I lose it. Oh, this is please, the, this roll. Is got, so it's, it's, a a D, it's a D20. It's a D20. Plus your intelligence plus modifier, my, you have to beat an 11. Back. Please roll a one. Please roll a one. Oh, man. Let's go. What did we get? Oh! oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> what instrument are you playing, Jameson? What's, what's Larry got? It's just a little, little flute recorder thing. <laughs> he cramps it and just whoosh. <laughs> so you're just sitting there, like in the comics. You just see that all of a sudden, like it's just ash, and it just disappears in your, <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> I, I look at Honest We're, John. <laughs> Riggins, Riggins, we want to be quiet when we get there. I reach into my robe, oh my and gosh. I pull out a tin flute. <laughs> <laughs> What's my final conclusion on Shadow Dark? This is a really fun game. It is familiar to anyone who has ever played any D20 system, all the way back to BX and OD&D, all the way up to 5th edition. If you know how to roll a D20 and add a modifier, you can play this game. But with all the familiarity, there are some really cool additions to it that make the game feel fresh and dangerous and really, really fun. And that's the key. So if you are inclined, go to the Kickstarter page and back Shadow Dark before your time is up. This is something you really should consider playing. Now, coming up on my channel, I'm going to be chewing on the Cypher system a little bit more, but that is going to be my next review here. 
Until we see each other again, folks. Happy playing, everyone.